finding relationships and equations. Um, recently, we've looked at finding relationships and tables, you know, the XY tables. We've also looked at finding relationships in uh, graphs. Today, we're going to take a look at finding uh, directly proportional relationships uh, in an equation. And uh, that happens um, basically when the, the y variables, the y variable uh, starts to vary depending on how the x increases. Um, the two values uh, have some sort of proportional relationship and that lets us be able to find that uh, constant ratio that's shown throughout the table or it, it shows up as a straight line on the graph and, and we have different ways of seeing it in tables and, and graphs. Um, now we're saying what about if I just gave you some sort of equation would you be able to tell me if it's a positive or negative a relationship or a positive and negative slope. Um, life gets a lot more complicated uh, in, in a lot of ways, um, but um, just understand that for this lesson, I'm, I'm not going to throw at you non-directly uh, proportional equations. I'm, I'm just going to be giving you um, literally the uh, equation that you need and teach you exactly where to look at. So um, what do we look at for an equation to say is it positive or is it uh, negative? Look at the value that's right in front of the x value. So there's my x as a value and it's multiplying a positive 3. Since that's a positive 3, since that's a positive number there, I will say this has a positive slope for this equation. If I go and make a table and graph this equation, it will create a line that is going up to the right. For this one, because it's a negative number right in front of it, I will say it has a negative slope. And that means if I graph it, it will be going down to the right. And uh, if, if you need to, look at 7.3 of my videos and, and we'll go into detail about what those look like on a Cartesian plane. Um, Again, there's there's lots of different types of equations. For seventh grade, I'm, I'm only going to give you this style of equation. Okay, um, your job's not to know about um, second degree equations, uh, parabolas, and and everything else. Um, and instead, we're going to keep it as as nice linear equations. You know that make the straight line. That's what we've been talking about. Directly proportional. Uh, relationships make a straight line when you graph them. So we're going to keep them here as, as this nice, easy, friendly equation. And you can just look at the number right in front of the x. With, and it's actually going to be multiplying the x each time. And if it's a positive number, it's a positive slope. If it's a negative number, it's a negative slope. Someone asked me in class, well, okay, you, you said that um, this is a positive number, and so it makes a positive slope. Why? Well, um, your x value can be any number um, because when you go to graph it, it's a relationship. What if your x value was 0? Well, that would be right here on the x-axis, but what's our y value? Well, y equals 3 times x. So when our x is 0, that means that my y would be 0. So let's just get a little table going here. When I make my x value 0, I plug in my, my 0 for the x, so 3 times 0 is 0, so y equals 0. When I plug in a 1, 3 times 1 is 3, so y equals 3. When I plugged in a, a 2 right here, 3 times 2 is 6, so my y value equals 6. And remember that the very basic of what a basis of, of what a positive slope is. As your x value increases, your y values increase. So this went up by 1, my y values went up by 3 also. Um, 1 to 2, when an increase of 1, my y values also increased. And in fact, it stayed at a nice constant rate, which proves this is a proportional relationship. And so basically, you're going to be having a graph that's going up to the right, because here's 0, 0. Uh, here's 1, 3, and here's 2, 6, and it just keeps on going up further and further. Um, when x is 3, 3 times 3 is 9. When x is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, and you see just it keeps increasing uh, at the same constant ratio, at the same rate. So uh, that's, that's why it works for the positive slopes. 
you don't really have to get that detail though you just have to basically train yourself to do this okay uh, this is a positive number multiplying the x so it's a positive slope and the same thing's going to happen when you look at a negative number multiplying it a negative number times it would be a negative slope so let's let's try this when my x value is 0 my y value is 0 because negative 3 times 0 is 0 negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 this this 1 right here is my x value this over here is what becomes my new y value so as my x went up my y value actually dipped down 3 so that's the the very essence of what a negative slope is and again uh, you can look back at my my previous videos and it talks about this but it it matches up to that same definition that we covered earlier about what a negative slope is in a direct relationship so um, when we go and we graph this it's actually not going to be in the first quadrant it's going to be in this fourth quadrant uh, zero zero and then one negative three and it just keeps going down to the right just like a negative slope should like to take a little bit further look about uh, some equations that are a little bit more complicated um, state whether each directly proportional relationship has uh, a positive slope or a negative slope okay um, remember focus on where the X is there's the X what's multiplying the X the 4 that's right in front of it so this one is a positive 4 so it's a positive slope what about this one? Here's my x. What's multiplying the x? A negative 5. So it's a negative slope. Now, some people are going, well, is it positive because of this plus sign? No, I, I don't care anything about this. It could be a minus sign. I mean, look at this one. We, we call this a negative slope right here because of the number that's multiplying the x over here is a plus sign we're not calling this positive I don't care about this part the only thing I'm looking at is the number in front of X I also don't care what the number is like this is a fraction big deal what type of fraction is it it's a positive fraction so it's a positive slope this is multiplying the X that's the reason I'm looking at it this is a minus six am I calling it a negative slope no I'm looking at the number multiplying the X and here, this number right here is multiplying x, so we'll call this whole equation a negative slope. And for good measure, I even had this one as a plus 4 just to show you I, I don't really care about that. Um, and at the same time, it can match up because remember back here, this plus sign actually was the same positive, but that has no effect upon it at all. Pause the video real quick and check these. This one you should say is positive slope because of this positive 4. This one is positive 1 half, so it's a positive slope. This is a negative 9, so we'll call it negative slope. Huge number here is actually representing pi for the most part, but it's positive, so we'll call it a positive slope. Uh, pause the video and try these out. I want to come back to number five here in just a second, um, but uh, this is a positive 14, so we'll call it positive, and this is a positive six, so we'll call it positive. Now, look, one through four, six and seven, it's been multiplying by a number. What happens if we actually have it um, a positive x divided by nine? Is it going to make it smaller? Yeah. And so it's going to have the opposite effect. And so if, if, if you see this, um, just go with negative. It would be the easiest way. Or how about we try plugging in two values, okay, and, and make it easy values. Because all that's happening is, is the x is being divided by 9. So let's just call it 18. And let's see. Let's try this. y equals 3 plus, uh, let's call it 27. Okay, and so we, we'll, we'll make a little xy table here. When my x is 18, we'll figure out what y is. And when my 
uh, x is 27. So as my x increases, we'll be able to work this out. 18 divided by 9 is 2. So 3 plus 2 is 5. So y would be 5. 27 divided by 9 is 3. What's 3 plus 3? That's 6. So actually, it looks like this should be a positive slope. And I uh, went back through and checked on my calculator. Um, I typed it in correctly uh, right before I, I checked it. I had said 3 minus x plus, divided by 9. And so what that was saying is it was like a, a negative x value there. So really, let's, let's forget everything that I just said about number 5. And let me show you uh, an easier way to do this. And I apologize. But basically... Do you see this plus sign right here? Is it right in front of this x? Okay. Um, basically, since this whole fraction is, is as I said, it's positive, this is a positive 9, you could think of that as a positive slope. Now, if I rewrote the equation, I said y equals 3 minus x divided by 9. Now, you notice that the 9 is positive, and this has a minus sign in front of this x. Well, that's the same as if this was a negative 1. Um, so this one we would call a negative. Now, the final thing is, and very rarely will you see this, 3 minus x divided by negative 9. Well, keep, change, change. I mean, that's, that's what's happening there, and so this would actually go back to being a positive slope. So, um, really... When, when you run into this situation and it just looks really confusing, we're still looking at what's in front of the x. In this case, it's a 1. I don't see a, a, a minus sign there, but what's right in front of it? This plus sign, and so we'll call it a positive slope. Let's go on and take a look at these real quick. All right, 3 is multiplying the x, but what's in front of the 3? A minus sign, so let's just consider that a negative 3, and we'll call it a negative slope. What's in front of this one? A 1, but what's in front of the 1? A negative sign. So this would be the same as a negative slope. This has got an awful fraction in front of the x, and it's multiplying it, but what type of uh, fraction is it positive? Well, always look at the sign in front of it. It would be the easiest way. That's a plus sign, so it's a positive slope. I think we've got about four more to do here. Yeah, there we go. So, um, let's see how it goes. Okay, so this should be a positive because it's positive 1.23 times x. This is a positive because it's a four-fifths in front of it. Positive, again, because of the 11 twelfths. And this one's a negative 3, so we'll just call it a, well, not negative 3, we'll call that one a negative slope. Um... Definitely more information than what you really need for the, the basics uh, of the equations. But we'll get into interpreting those um, in 7.5 a lot more.